Hey there, crazies. I was just having this conversation with Question Clone. Why am I this size? Well, you're human and you're my clone, so you have to be this size. Why are humans this size? Oh, wow. That's a great topic for a video. I gotta, I gotta think about this. Hey, wh where are you going? So let's see what we can do with this. First, we could have just as easily been a slightly different size, as we can see from the usual suspects. I mean, that's just chance. Yeah, but why aren't we way bigger? Because not everything scales the same way. And a normal sized human is kinda like a scale model of a giant human. So let's make a list. Things that scale with volume include mass, which can affect how you resist changes in your motion, weight, which is how much gravity pulls down on you, and heat generated because you have a lot more cells doing more stuff. Things that scale with area include bone and muscle strength because that's related to cross-section, and heat dissipated because that's related to exposed skin area. Side note, don't ever let anyone tell you you lose more heat through your head. You lose heat through any exposed skin, no matter where it is. End of side note. Okay, let's say we make a clone that's, I don't know, 10 times taller. They'd have a thousand times the mass, a thousand times the weight, and would be generating a thousand times as much heat. Yikes! But unfortunately, they'd only have a hundred times the strength, and they'd only be dissipating a hundred times the heat. So basically, they wouldn't have the strength to move their body. Their bones would break under the weight of their body, and they'd burn up from the inside until their organs shut down. But yes, there used to be things like dinosaurs and mammoths. But yes, there are still elephants and giraffes. But what about, and yes, floating can take some of the weight off the bones and muscles, so aquatic animals have an easier time being bigger. The point is, humans can't be that big. So then why aren't we way smaller? Mmm, that one's a little harder, but let's see what we can do. The big problem here is our thought holes, also known as our brains. Brains! Brain cells, or neurons, are some of the smallest cells in the human body, at least in diameter. And it still takes a brain this big to give us our level of intelligence. But don't elephants have? Okay, okay, it's not just about brain size. Larger animals, like elephants, do have bigger brains than us. In fact, they have about three times as many neurons. But that doesn't mean the elephant is three times smarter than us. Naturally, bigger animals have bigger brains because there's more stuff to control. Over 97% of those elephant neurons are found in the cerebellum, the part of the brain most responsible for motor control. It needs all those neurons just to control all its big clunky parts. So what about a brain to body mass ratio? Something like that has been suggested before. We call it an encephalization quotient, or EQ, which is the ratio between actual brain mass and the brain mass we predict would be necessary to control the body. Cats have an EQ of 1, chimps about 2.5, bottlenose dolphins between 4 and 5, and humans sit comfortably at about 7. That certainly puts us on top. But we usually attribute higher intelligence to the cerebral cortex, which is that wrinkly part on the outside of our brains. And only mammals have it. Which is pretty arrogant if you ask me, limiting intelligence to mammals. Crows are pretty smart, and they don't have a cerebral cortex. Octopuses are really smart, and they don't have a cerebral cortex. In fact, two-thirds of their neurons are in their arms, which are not tentacles, by the way. Those neurons allow each arm to act independently of the others and the central brain. Brain. It's a completely different kind of intelligence. Okay, I concede. Intelligence is complicated. But there is another problem you'd run into if you were smaller. Your lungs. If you get small enough, like insects small, lungs are unnecessary. It would be more energy efficient to just absorb oxygen through your skin. Insects do it through little holes in their exoskeleton. Super main ultimate point? Different size organisms have to work with a different set of rules. Our rules only work at our size. But here's the real question. Why do we have any size at all? We'll try to find an answer on the next episode of The Science Asylum. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. In the last video, we talked about Planck units. Comment response time. Rogue Assassin Gaming was wondering, if Planck length is the shortest distance, then could Planck time be the shortest amount of time? Yes, in fact, the same models of quantum gravity say that about length and time. But again, they don't have any experimental evidence. So for now, Planck time is just the time it takes for light to travel one Planck length. And as we said in that video, it was the age of the universe when it was one Planck length across. Papa K heard one time that if you try to measure the Planck scale, you'll create a black hole. Well, maybe. A typical way to measure position is to use light, and the wavelength of that light is your precision. To measure Planck length, the photon has to have an energy of 12 billion joules, or six Planck energies. Basically, you just turned half a fruit fly into one photon. 
that much mass energy would create a black hole if it was smushed into one Planck length. But just because a photon has a wavelength that small, it doesn't mean that's the size of the photon. Wavelength and size are not necessarily the same thing. Kamarovac suggested we should switch to a base 12 or base 16 number system. You know, 12 does have a lot more factors than 10, so it would certainly make writing decimals easier. But I think you'd have a hard time convincing anyone to change. We can't even get the US to switch to the metric system. Pablo had some very astute criticisms for using blackbody radiation to define Planck temperature. For those of you who don't know, blackbody radiation is just light emitted by an object due solely to its temperature, so basically the vibrations and collisions between molecules. It's commonly stated that if an object is Planck temperature hot, then it will emit light that has a wavelength of one Planck length. But the problem with saying this is not just one type of photon is emitted by the object. Blackbody radiation is distributed over many wavelengths. You are emitting it right now. It's just mostly infrared. One Planck temperature gives you a peak wavelength of one Planck length. Something could be at half a Planck temperature and still be emitting light at one Planck length. Just not as much. And to anyone like Infinity Pool who thinks this channel doesn't get enough attention, share the videos all the places. Anyway, thanks for watching.